How's it going everyone? So I want to have a quick talk about one of the most common pitfalls I've seen beginners fall into when they're trying to use state and react. So let's say we have a page here and in that page, let's just say there's a button. And when you click on that button, it does something. So handle click. Um, let's just go ahead and make it go ahead and make a function up here called handle click. And let's just say it increments some counter or something, right? We'll keep this really stupid and basic. And when you click on the button, we want to increment this the state variable that we haven't defined yet. So let's also go up here and say const count and set count. This is how you set up a state variable in React. And you should be familiar with this. So basically you use the use state hook, you pass it some initial value. In our case, we could say zero. And when you click on this button, we want to increment this by one. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say set count. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, pass it a callback, and I'll say C plus one. So this one should be pretty straightforward. I mean, if I go to this page and I click on this button, it increments by one, right? Nothing, nothing too crazy about that, right? What I've seen a lot of people do is that they will increment count, but then they try to use this count variable, right? So they'll do like an Axios, not an Axios, they'll do like a fetch. They'll say like some URL, so say like localhost, 3000 3, slash um, count slash count or something like this. So they'll like hit an endpoint or they'll send some data over to an endpoint and they'll expect this count to be incremented by one, right? So we increment it by one here and we expect this one to be one, but that's actually not how it works. If I were to go and do this, load up my network tab real quick. And if I click on the button, it's actually gonna send over zero, okay? actually delayed by one every single time. Even though the page shows two, it's doing a request to the endpoint slash one. So why is that? Why does this happen? And why can you not do stuff like this? And how, how can you like work around it, right? With the use state hook, when you call it, it returns an array that has two values in it. The first index of the array is the actual like state value or variable that you're storing. And the second element of the array is a function you can call to update this variable. Now, one thing I want to point out is although this is an array, I believe this is not a real reference to the underlying array that React stores, right? So if I were to change this to just array, and then here, instead of set count, I said array of one, and here I said array of zero. Remember like the destructuring approach that we did before, that's just a syntactic sugar in JavaScript to basically work around declaring some variables. So you could potentially do the exact same logic like this. And you might think, okay, well now that we're referencing the, the array and not a copy of the value, then this should work, right? So let's just go ahead and refresh the page and let's see what happens. And again, this is still printing out one value that's delayed, right? So this, although this thing returns an array, right? And just to kind of exemplify that, I'm gonna print out what this array is. You can also use a debugger if you want. I'll just refresh the page. You'll see it prints an array and has a zero and it has a function. So this array is like a copy kind of, of like what the actual underlying state is. So you can't even depend on doing this of like updating state and then expecting this thing to be updated right after calling that update call. So the reason this is doing this is because use state, when you call the setter function, this is kind of a, it's a synchronous call in terms of JavaScript, but behind the scenes, I'm pretty sure it's just like pushing an event onto like an event queue and a react will come at a later point, run through the event queue, batch up all the state changes. And then when it's done with that, it'll just re-render all your components and kind of redraw and do the reconciliation to your page. Okay, so just keep that in mind that although this is a synchronous function, like if you hover over this and you have TypeScript, notice that it doesn't say async or promise anywhere, right? So it's a synchronous function, but behind the scenes, it's probably doing something and pushing some state somewhere to be processed at a later time. And I might even do a small little vanilla JS example to kind of let drive this point home for you all who are new to React and how you know React works under the hood. But for right now, like what is the workaround for this? Well, what I would potentially do, um, like for example, let's say you need to increment count, but then you also need to use the new value of count here. How do you do that? Well, one way is you could say like new count is equal to count plus one. 
And then you can go ahead and just say set date to new count like this. All right, so let's just go ahead and run this. And I'll show you what happens. So now if I actually click the button, notice that it makes a request to slash one, which is the exact same state that we're seeing here. So, so instead of having this depend on this count variable, which again, we just showed that it's going to be an old value. I'm just going to pull out the new value here, increment it by one, and then set that here and use it here. So there's some people who would argue that this is not proper because since we're using the old value of count here, we should actually be using a callback like I was doing before. Right, but if you do this, then how do you make sure you have access to like the latest version of count here? Because set count, you're not supposed to do any type of like asynchronous stuff. So if you did something like this inside your set count, I'm pretty sure you're doing something completely wrong. This is supposed to be a small atomic like function that just does one simple little thing and that's updating state. So another uh, approach that people do in React is they use the use effect, right? So they could actually make a use effect here. You could pass it count and then you could do the fetch when the count changes. And you could basically like do this. Uh, I think this would also work. So if I were to do this, um, you will see that this should work. Now, the only issue is that this effect is actually going to run right when this page loads, right? So we might not want that scenario, which means that we'll have to go and like add in some type of Boolean to prevent this from running on the first time this page loads and then only run it after it's loaded or and then only run it after it's mounted for the first time. It's just a lot of extra logic and complexity. So that's why I would avoid doing this. Like don't, I, I would not try to listen for variables and then like do a fetch request when that variable changes. Um, but that's just me. Uh, I would, if you can, I would try to make all of your things that happen when you click the button live inside the click listener. So I definitely make sure it lives there and I wouldn't even try to bring in a use effect. Okay. So this is just kind of a, a little overview, but let's talk a little bit about like, why, why is this the way it is? I mean, let's, let's go ahead and make like a JavaScript file here. I'll just make like a test.js or TS, whatever. All right, so at this point in the video, I do want to stop and say that I'm about to do some more advanced talk. And if you're a beginner, you're going to be completely lost. I've even got lost a little bit myself when I was trying to code through this. But I just want to just throw that out there so you're not mad that I'm kind of talking about more advanced stuff and just like going through some of this stuff without explaining everything. Um, and then I do jump around a little bit. So Hopefully it's not too confusing, um, but if you are more advanced or intermediate and you do want to follow along with some of the stuff I'm talking about, feel free to. I think it's cool to kind of investigate further into these libraries and frameworks to really understand how the engine works under the hood. But anyway, let's just jump into it. I'm going to try to create my own like little use state hook and kind of explain how React will uh, communicate with that use state hook through the life cycle of React to basically, you know, set and retrieve state. All right, so let's see if we can actually try to implement like our own little like use state function to see if we truly understand like how React kind of works behind the scenes. Again, I'm not going to do a complete one-to-one -one implementation of how React works because A, I don't really know off the bat how it works. And B, I don't think it's important to like understand what we're trying to learn. So I'm going to make a function called use state. And again, this takes in a initial state here. And what this kind of does in React, I believe they keep track of like an array of states or something. And every time you call use state, it basically adds in your hook. Like, I guess you could call this hooks. And every time you call a new hook, it's going to either add the hook or it's going to retrieve the existing thing that was in that, that, uh, that same hook value. So like if I made an index here, I'll just say I equals zero. I think what happens is it's going to basically look up. If there's a hooks of zero, then basically just return hooks of zero. So it kind of caches some state. Um, and then otherwise, it's going to basically just say hooks.push. And then let's just put some state here. So in our case, we could say initial state. And then we could also push some type of like fallback function. So I'll say like setter. Actually, let's just push an array. I'll say initial state. And then we're going to push a setter here like this. I'll put it to do so you don't forget about this. To do push something to a, to a queue. And then finally, we should probably just return hooks of i, uh, and then probably increment i++ afterwards. Okay, so let's, let's try this out. Let's see what happens. So internally, this would be like React code. Now, this is really, really rudimentary, and this isn't ex exactly how React does it. I'd probably make this a let as well. But basically, when you call use state, it's going to see like, hey, is there a hook at index 0? If there is, return it. Otherwise, 
we are going to push a new hook into this ordered array and somehow like use state knows to keep track of like what, what order it was in the call stack of like hooks and then it's going to return the array if it exists right so it's going to push the array with a callback function and then it returns the array now i might need to do the i might need to do this Something like that. Anyway, I'm just playing around. So like if I say anything wrong, like call me out. So somewhere in the code though, like let's say you have a React component, right? Let's just pretend, pretend we are in a React component. Okay, can you pretend with me? Hopefully you can. I'm gonna call const count in set count equals use state. Okay. So I should be able to print out what count is here and it should return the initial value. So if I were to pass in like five here and run this code, it should print out five. That should make sense, right? Because we're just basically pushing that five into an array and then storing it somewhere and then returning it. All, all this was basically to talk about the set count and why it's synchronous. So if I were to go here and say set count of, I don't know, six, and then I print out count, again, this is gonna print out five, right? Because if you look at the actual internals, well, set count doesn't do anything yet because we haven't implemented anything. But technically, this thing, what it's going to do is it's going to say, like, I'll just put like a queue here. It's going to push a command into a queue. So I'll say like queue.push. And this could potentially be like a callback, which is then going to update. So I'll say like hooks of i. And the way closures work, I'll have access to that i here. And then I'll say hooks of i of index 0 is equal to some new state, right? So I'll say like new state would be here, like that. So basically when you call the callback, it pushes something into a queue that when it's ran later is basically gonna update your hook to have that new state, okay? So something in React, whether it's like an interval or some type of like just some part of their design process is going to process this queue and then it's going to run all these callbacks in the same order that you've called them, right? So let's just pretend we have another function here called process queue. And it's going to let, just run through, I'll say let, let cb equal, I'll just say let cb from queue. Um, and basically just call the callback every single time. Or sorry, of, I don't know why I said from. So basically, loop through the queue. For every callback that we get, just call it. Okay. So now, if I do the same code, like everything should work the way it did. But now in React, somewhere along the line, after you've done all your state calls, there's something in React in the in the framework slash library itself that is basically going to call a process queue and it's going to run through all your state changes and then it's going to process them and then it's going to re-render re -render your components in React. So when React calls process queue, and this crashes because I believe the i has been incremented by now. Um, so we do we probably need to have some type of closure set up, which keeps track of old i like this. And then we should probably just return, uh, if I do here, I'll say return function like this. I'll just do a self-executing function like this, and then I'll return that. So now we're getting a little bit more complex. We got a closure going. I'm keeping track of the old eye here. And then we basically want to use old eye like that. And then I can increment i plus one up there. So I did restructure. Okay, so I want to I want to stop and say I did restructure the code a little bit because I did run into a snag where my design probably didn't make the most sense. So now I kind of made a function called my component that uses a hook. Right, so I'm gonna start this at zero and I'm gonna say count plus one or something. Um, and basically what React does, remember this is all like uh, React calls your components, right? React will call your component and then it'll process the queue. And then at a, some other point in time, it's going to basically decrement the I so that all the hooks can kind of reinitialize in the same order that they were called. Now, again, this is a super simplification of how React works because I don't truly know how it works. I just heard things that like the ordering of your hooks and how they're called or is important. So if you have a conditional inside like a hook, that's why you get errors because you have to call these hooks in the exact same order 
make sure you get the same back, uh, the same cached value. So let's run this real quick and see what happens. So the first thing we do is we call my component, which is going to set up a state variable as zero. That's going to go here and basically cache some type of state inside an array at index zero. And then it does all the stuff we kind of talked about. And then if we print out count, it should be zero. And then we increment count here by one. We print it out again. And because this again is going to have just a reference to the initial value, it should print out zero and zero. But again, once the component finishes executing, React is going to basically process that queue. Remember, we're pushing a basically a callback into a queue or some type of command list that React will process through and batch up all the state changes. And then it re-renders everything. So at this point, re-render all your components. Now, to get this to properly work, I believe you just have to reset your index back to zero so that when you call my component again, it's going to then get back the same value of what your, your state was called. Okay, so if I run this, notice that it prints out one here. But that's kind of how I understand how React kind of works under the hood and how like the state works and how, you know, the use state callback function, the setter function is kind of synchronous because it's pushing some type of man into a queue that's processed at a later time. And now this was obviously a lot more advanced. So if you're watching this, this tutorial as a beginner, you're not going to probably follow anything I just told you. But I do think it's cool to like think about these things because they do help you become a better developer. And again, if I said anything wrong here or did anything wrong, feel free to call me out in the comments. I believe it's more sophisticated than just having a global eye. They probably have some type of eye for every single component like this might be closed over some type of like incrementer so that every component has its own internal like array of hooks that it keeps track of. I just kind of did a rudimentary way of just having like a hooks, um, you know, globally, but technically every single component has its own like isolated array of hooks that in state that it keeps track of, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. So if you guys uh, enjoyed being completely lost and going down this path of like implementing our own little react use state hook, Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, dislike if you want to, press the bell icon. And uh, like always, feel free to join my Discord if you want and uh, ask me questions or just try to get help with your learning journey. Have a good day. Happy coding.